you are asked to find finite element formulation for a rope element if the potential energy equation is provided in this problem. Total potential energy pi is equal to string energy U minus potential energy of external force V. Here, the tension T is a constant. Also, the distributive force F, which will do work to reduce the potential, is also a constant. You need to find by principle of minimum potential energy, PMPE. The local Stevenson matrix K and load vector R for two types of element. First, two-node linear element. Second, three-node quadratic element. To help you solve this problem, let's first review several useful concepts. The first concept is quadratic form of a matrix in linear algebra. A scalar U can be written in quadratic matrix form DKD, rho D times square K times column D. Let's assume the symbol is the case when N is 2. U can be expanded as Now differentiate u with respect to this. Let's organize them together and write in matrix form. We have quadratic dkd taking derivatives with respect to this is equal to 2kd. Please note the coefficient 2 here. The second concept is principal minimum potential energy, which tells us that among all admissible solutions, the one minimizes total potential energy rendering the exact solution, or in other words, satisfies the strong formulation. To apply PMPE in FEA, if we manage to write pi into half of dkd minus dr form by taking derivative to find the minimum value of pi mathematically, using the concept we just introduced. We find the exactly the standard implicit finite element formulation KD equal to R. So if we can rewrite pi into this form, we find K and R. The third concept is shape function. In finite element method, we are first interested in solving for values such as displacement at discrete nodes only, such as node 1 and 2 in this simple two-node element. For any other position x in between these nodes, the values will be obtained by interpolation function, shape function. Rho nx times column d or rho d times column nx, where d is nodal value vector and nx is a shape function vector at position x. Obviously, the number of nodes and number of shift functions should be the same. There is a very useful property for shift function. That is, shift function at any node has a value of 1 at that node and a value of 0 at all other nodes. Shift function 1 equal to 1 to node number 1, 0 at node number 2. Shift function number 2 n to x equal to 0 at node 1 and 1 at node number 2. Now let's come back to solve our row problem. 
label our original potential energy equation with star. Let's approximate the displacement within each element ux in the star equation by finite element approximate solution u tilde, where u tilde is interpolation between nodal displacements. Let's substitute u tilde equal to nd and dn into star equation. And divide du tilde dx squared to du tilde dx times itself. Now let's plug in u tilde is equal to rho nx times column d and rho d times column nx. Replace first u tilde by rho d times column nx. And second u tilde by rho nx times column d. And last u tilde by rho d times column nx. Now let's take out the row D to the front of integration and column D to the back. And third row D out to the front. We can do this because nodal values does not depend on X. The purpose of doing this is to write the potential energy pi into the standard quadratic form, half of dKd minus dr. So compare with the standard quadratic form introduced in concept 1 and apply concept 2 on principal minimum potential energy. We can name this K matrix, which is n by n, where n is the size of a vector. Of course, if we Use PMPE, take derivative of potential energy with respect to ds, we get this implicit finite element formulation kd equal to r, where this k is the stiffness matrix for the elements we constructed, which will be a square matrix. Let's name this equation number one. We can also obtain the load vector r from this integration, the size m by one. Let's name it equation number two. Distributed load fx is equivalent onto the nodes. In order to find expressions of stiffness matrix k and load vector r for specific types of elements, such as case number one, two node linear element. We need to first construct shift functions for this type of element. Of course, for elements with two nodes, we have two shift functions, n1x and n2x. The element length is L. For the first shift function, it should be equal to 1 and node number 1, and 0 and node number 2, in between linear interpolation. The shift function can be written as 1 minus x over L. 
We also need to construct shift function n2x to be x over l. In equation number one, to find Stephen matrix k, we need to evaluate the first derivative of shift function. It will be a constant vector for this case. Plug this into equation number one. We perform integration from 0 to L. Column first derivative times t, row first derivative of shift function. We can find the k matrix is equal to this 2 by 2 matrix for an element with length L. From equation number 2, we can perform integration shift function if distributed load fx is a constant f0 the integration will be equal to this so far we have found the local Stephenson matrix k and load vector r for a two-node linear element with length l. We will perform similar operations for case number two, three-node quadratic element in 1D. We will have three nodes and three associated shift functions per element. Each element with length L will include three nodes, nodes 1, 2, and 3. Node number 1 is located at x equals 0, number 2 half of L, and number 3 L position. So shift function N1 should have very 1 at node number 1 and 0 at 2 and 3. It can be constructed by Lagrange interpolation. When x equal to half l or l, it is equal to 0. When it is evaluated x equal to 0, then it will be equal to 1. Shift function n2x should have value 1 and node number 2 and 0 and node 1 and 3. we can construct its function by similar way like range interpolation. We can also obtain shape function number 3 and 3x in the same way. These three shape functions can be plugged into equation 1 and 2 to find k and r. We will use MATLAB to perform derivations here. You need symbolic math toolbox in MATLAB to do derivations. First, declare symbolic variables t, f0, x, and l. Then input shift function n1x and n2x and 3x. Put them together to form row n, transpose to get column n. Take first derivative with respect to x to find d and dx in row form. Transpose column d and dx. Plug in equation number one and integrate from 0 to L to find local stiffness matrix K. Plug into equation number 2, integrate. Find local load vector R. 